Hi everyone, my name is Mark, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Michelle Williams led a rather troubled life. When she was just 17 years old, she found herself pregnant with her first son. Less than a decade later, Michelle had three children, two sons and a daughter, by two different men. She had been divorced twice. And Michelle claimed that all of her relationships had ended because her partner had cheated on her. According to Michelle, one of her exes cheated on her with their 17-year-old dental hygienist. However, one of her younger sons, Andrew, had a different perspective. Andrew said that not only were their mother's husbands unfaithful, but Michelle herself had also cheated on her various husbands over the years. Lee, Michelle's older son, said growing up in Michelle's household was even more chaotic. Michelle worked in various exotic nightclubs and topless bars and would often drag her children around with her. Given Michelle's line of work, her sons even suspected that she might have dabbled in sex work. Michelle's lifestyle had a significant impact on her children. Lee described their childhood as chaotic, saying they constantly had to adjust to their mother's changing circumstances. The presence of exotic nightclubs and topless bars in their neighborhood made it hard for them to maintain a normal upbringing. However, things in Michelle Williams' life took a turn for the better in 2007 when she met Greg Williams. Michelle and Greg were introduced while they were at a swingers club. According to Greg's brother Michael, who was with Greg at the club, Michelle was openly performing sex acts in public at the club, but despite that, Greg was smitten with her. Greg Williams was a successful businessman and computer engineer who built a successful company from the ground up and netted $500,000 annually. When Greg is not working, he's at the gym bodybuilding or practicing martial arts. Furthermore, Greg was devoted to his family. He had a young daughter who he adored. Michelle was captivated by Greg's success and wealth and saw in him the potential to provide her with the lifestyle she had always desired. Michelle had always dreamed of having financial independence, a luxurious lifestyle, and a supportive partner. Greg seemed to offer all these things and more. In 2007, Greg and Michelle decided to get married after only a few months of dating. However, Michelle's two sons, Lee and Andrew, both Army veterans, were not enthusiastic about their mother and Greg being husband and wife. They had reservations about Greg's character and saw him as an arrogant bully. However, Michelle's sons were not the only ones who had reservations about her and Greg's relationship. Several of Greg's relatives also expressed doubts and questions about Michelle's motives. They wondered if she was only interested in Greg for his fortune. According to Michelle Fletcher, Greg's sister, Michelle was never nice to her. Michelle Fletcher accused her sister-in-law, Michelle, of brazenly using her sexuality with men and even tried her moves on her husband, Bryn. Once, Michelle had crawled up to the attic and asked for Bryn's help. When Bryn got up there, he noticed Michelle bent over without underwear trying to entice him. Despite everyone's apprehensions about their marriage, Greg didn't seem to mind being married to Michelle. Greg purchased an affluent house in the suburbs of a gated community in Keller, Texas, a suburb of Fort Worth, a safe area to raise a family. Greg bought Michelle whatever she wanted, and they had a pair of matching Mercedes-Benz in their garage, which he purchased as an anniversary gift for them. Greg and Michelle eventually had a daughter. By all accounts, Greg was dedicated to his older daughter and his younger one. However, Michelle did not get along well with her stepdaughter. Michelle and her new daughter had a strained relationship from the beginning. Michelle felt her stepdaughter was not respectful of her authority and treated her with disdain. The situation escalated when Michelle accused her stepdaughter of attempting to drug her by slipping drugs into her morning coffee. Despite his daughter's denials, Greg made the decision to send her away to rehab. Because Greg worked long hours, he purchased Michelle a frozen yogurt shop called Blueberries in 2011 to keep her busy. This decision was made despite Michelle's lack of a business background. Greg hoped that owning a business would keep Michelle occupied. 
However, Michelle did not fully commit herself to running the business. She spent very little time at Blueberries unless it was to come and take money out of the till. Michelle treated the shop as her personal ATM, withdrawing cash whenever she needed it. Instead of focusing on running her business, Michelle prioritized her indulgences. In October 2011, Greg and Michelle Williams were looking forward to closing on their new home. They meticulously planned every detail, including a pool for their four-year-old daughter to play in. However, everything changed on October 13th at 4:40 a.m. when Michelle dialed 911 and frantically shouted that there was a person in her home who had shot her husband. Michelle, clearly shaken, expressed her fear that the shooter was still inside the house, heightening her anxiety as her young daughter was asleep there as well. Within moments, police officers arrived at the scene and promptly began their investigation. The officers quickly searched the premises, even venturing outside to check for intruders. Despite their thorough efforts, the officers were unable to locate any suspects. However, when they ascended the stairs to the couple's master bedroom, they discovered a shocking sight. In the bed, lifeless and surrounded by a pool of blood, lay 40-year-old Greg. The victim of a gunshot wound to his right temple. At the scene, Michelle informed the responding officers that she had been asleep on the couch with her daughter when a loud noise awoke her. Michelle walked to the master bedroom to check on her husband, Greg. When she arrived, Michelle thought she saw a dark-clad figure in the room. She stated that at that moment she felt a sharp pain in her head and everything went black. According to Michelle, this person hit her in the head. Crime scene investigators arrived at Greg and Michelle's home. Upon their arrival, they observed no evidence of forced entry, which raised the question of how the intruder had entered the house. Additionally, it was discovered that nothing had been stolen. The investigators observed that none of the drawers had been opened or rifled through, and twenty thousand dollars was found in the safe untouched. Indicating that the motive for the shooting was not robbery. At the back door of the home, the investigators discovered a handgun, a .45-caliber weapon with a shell casing and a wrench lying beside it. Several feet from the back door, the investigators found plastic-colored tubs filled with Clorox wipes. Upon further investigation, the investigators determined that the Clorox wipes had been used to wipe down every surface of the house. The investigators found no fingerprints or DNA, not even from the people living in the house. Michelle was interviewed at the police department regarding her husband Greg's shooting. She repeated the same story she had given the responding officers, although detectives found her story suspicious. The detectives confronted Michelle and told her that her story did not align with the evidence discovered at the scene. Based on the evidence, it appeared that either Michelle had shot Greg or covered up the crime. However, Michelle adamantly denied harming her husband or having any involvement in his death. She agreed to take a gunshot residue test, and the results were negative. After five hours of interrogation, Michelle began to alter her account of how Greg died. Michelle stated that Greg had taken his life. And she covered up the evidence in order to protect their four-year-old daughter from learning that her father had taken his own life. Michelle reasoned that it would be less traumatic for the child to believe that an intruder was responsible. Upon discovering Greg's lifeless body, Michelle told the detective she made a decision to conceal the fact that Greg took his life and staged it as a robbery gone wrong. To perpetuate this ruse, she utilized Clorox wipes to clean every corner of the house, including the gun that was used to take Greg's life. She then intentionally positioned the weapon outside the patio door, along with the wrench that she had used to hit herself in the face, creating a false impression that an intruder had harmed her. Since Michelle admitted to staging the crime scene to look like a robbery gone wrong, it led to her being charged with evidence tampering and released on bail. Upon being released from custody, she met with Greg's grieving family and told them the same story she had shared with the police. Michelle claimed that Greg had exhibited signs of depression prior to the incident. Michelle stated that one day 
she walked into the garage and discovered both of their Mercedes Benzes were warm, indicating that someone had been operating them within the garage. This discovery raised suspicions for Michelle, and she wondered if Greg may have been contemplating taking his own life that day. When Michelle spoke to her sister after Greg's death, she admitted she cleaned Greg's hands and weapon while staging the crime scene. Greg's death became front-page news, captivating the attention of the residents of Keller, Texas. This story, which unfolded in a wealthy gated community, had all the elements of a captivating real-life soap opera. The shocking circumstances surrounding his death had everyone glued to their screens, unable to get enough details. In the weeks following Greg's death, Michelle, his wife, did not take part in his funeral arrangements and even did not attend the service. Michelle's absence left Greg's family feeling hurt and confused, as they expected Michelle to be more involved in honoring her husband's memory. Moreover, Michelle decided to sell the frozen yogurt shop blueberries, which Greg had purchased for her only months before his death. When Greg bought the shop, he paid $110,000 for it. However, Michelle decided to sell it for a mere $45,000. Furthermore, Michelle sold the frozen yogurt shop and Greg's business despite Greg having an excellent client base in netting $500,000 a year. After Greg's death, Michelle sold the company for only $8,000 a month. Greg's family believed Michelle was actively trying to dispose of Greg's possessions and legacy as quickly as possible. Her behavior made them question her involvement in his death. Greg's relatives were not the only ones who had doubts about Michelle's strange behavior. The detectives who were investigating Greg's shooting also found themselves questioning Michelle's account of staging the crime scene to hide the fact that Greg had taken his own life. They believed the story to be absurd and suspected that Michelle was the actual shooter. Their suspicions were fueled by the overwhelming evidence pointing toward Michelle as the killer. The detectives were faced with the task of determining what weapon was used to kill Greg. In order to identify and trace the fired bullets or cartridge cases back to a firearm, they sought the expertise of a forensic firearm toolmark examiner. This examiner is trained to analyze and compare marks left on fired bullets or cartridge cases to determine their origin and connection to a specific firearm. Upon examination, it was revealed that Greg owned a 45 caliber gun, which was recovered from the scene. This particular firearm was a high-end pistol that Greg typically kept on his nightstand. The forensic firearm toolmark examiner conducted a detailed analysis and was able to determine that this gun was the weapon used to kill Greg. Additionally, the examination revealed the presence of bullet cases in the bedding, and the bullet recovered from the autopsy was found to be a match to Greg's gun. During Greg's autopsy, the medical examiner performed a thorough examination to determine the circumstances surrounding his death. One notable finding was that the shot fired into Greg's head went directly through him rather than up or down, and this raised the questions for the medical examiner as it seemed unusual for the bullet to have traveled that way if Greg had shot himself. Additionally, the medical examiner observed stipulating marks on the right side of Greg's face. These marks, which resembled to small bruises, were caused by the forceful impact of gunpowder upon the skin. The stipulation marks indicated that the gunpowder traveled some distance, indicating that this was not a contact wound. Another significant observation made by the medical examiner was the distance of the firearm from Greg when it was fired. The examiner estimated that the gun was 6 to 24 inches away from Greg's head. This distance further contradicted the idea that Greg had taken his life. Furthermore, the examination of the crime scene provided additional evidence contradicting the theory of Greg taking his life. The shell casing recovered from the bedding was a crucial piece of evidence. This position of the casing was found in an area that would not have been easily reachable if it had been ejected from the firearm in the position Greg was in if he had shot himself. In January 2012, 
Three months after Greg's death, Michelle, his wife, was arrested and charged with his murder. However, the detectives in the case faced a huddle. The Keller Police Department, inexperienced at murder scenes, had not done a great job in their initial investigation. When Greg's body was transported from the crime scene to the medical examiner's office, he was wrapped in his bed sheets, which could potentially lead to cross-examination. The case faced numerous issues, and the state offered Michelle a plea deal. Rather than murder, Michelle could plead to tampering with evidence in a Texas charge called deadly conduct, which means wielding a weapon irresponsibly. Michelle accepted the deal and faced a sentence of two to twenty years. However, Michelle knew that if she went to trial, she could end up imprisoned for fifty to one hundred years. She wanted to get out to be with her daughter as soon as possible. With the plea deal, Michelle would be released when her daughter turned eighteen. Michelle had been released on bail following her arrest for allegedly murdering her husband. After being released, she began dating Jean Wallace, a personal trainer who was twelve years younger than her. Jean was Lee's, Michelle's son's best friend, which added an extra layer of complexity to the situation. When Lee discovered his mother and best friend were together, he was angry and resentful. Lee's anger stemmed from feeling betrayed by his best friend and mother. Despite the circumstances, Michelle and Jean decided to pursue their relationship further. They opened a gym together, which was a turning point for Michelle. She began referring to herself as Shelly and adopted a new persona. During one of Michelle's court hearings, she informed the judge that she was pregnant with twins and that it was a high-risk pregnancy. The judge and the prosecution were skeptical of Michelle's claim, but they decided to delay her sentencing hearing until after the birth of the babies. To challenge the doubts, Michelle produced sonogram pictures in court. However, those familiar with Michelle pointed out that faking pregnancies was one of her well-known traits. Additionally, there had been rumors that she had faked miscarriages in the past in order to seek attention and garner sympathy. These claims cast a shadow of doubt on her pregnancy's authenticity. Michelle was interviewed by a reporter with 48 Hours as she was awaiting sentencing for her plea deal on charges of deadly conduct related to her husband's death. However, rather than maintaining her initial story that Greg took his own life, Michelle stunned everyone by reverting to her original claim that a mysterious dark-clad intruder killed Greg. This sudden change in narrative caught the attention of the judge, who promptly summoned Michelle to court and admonished her for denying what she had pleaded guilty to. The judge was particularly displeased by Michelle's attempt to shift blame away from herself. As a result of Michelle's denial, the judge revoked her plea deal, leaving her at risk of receiving a life sentence rather than serving a few years in jail. Michelle went on trial for murdering her husband in September 2014, three years after Greg died. During her trial, there was no sign Michelle was pregnant at all, let alone with twins. Furthermore, investigators found no doctor or hospital records that indicated Michelle was pregnant, despite her claims. It was clear to everyone Michelle lied about being pregnant in an attempt to get her trial delayed and even possibly dismissed. As Michelle's trial began, the prosecutors presented their case, alleging that she was responsible for shooting and killing Greg. The prosecution claimed that the primary motive behind Michelle's actions was financial. They alleged that despite Greg's high-income career, Michelle's excessive spending habits had left the couple unable to afford the down payment on the house they were planning to purchase. According to the prosecution, Michelle's uncontrollable spending had left the couple with a mere thirty thousand dollars in their bank accounts. Michelle was allegedly driven to commit the murder as a means to secure the financial resources they needed to fulfill their dream of owning a home. The prosecutors in the case alleged that a fight ensued when Greg discovered that there was no money left in their account. 
During this altercation, Michelle realized that with Greg gone, he was worth more to her than alive due to his $850,000 life insurance policy. As a result, she decided to take action and eliminate him. During the trial, the state called the medical examiner a witness. With nearly 40 years of professional experience, the medical examiner testified that he had never came across an instance where a person committed took their life with a gun positioned from the distance in which Greg's was. Additionally, Greg's mother took the witness stand and recounted her memories of her son. She mentioned that Greg was frequently tired from work, but despite this, he was content with his life and thoroughly enjoyed spending time with his daughter. According to his mother, Greg would often gush about the house he and Michelle were planning on buying. The state's bombshell witness was Andrew, Michelle's younger son. While on the witness stand, Andrew shared a shocking revelation. According to Andrew, one month after Greg passed away, Michelle approached him and asked him to reach out to some friends. She asked them to purchase a large sweater and go out to the woods and fire a pistol. This plan was to leave behind gunpowder residue on the shirt. Michelle then instructed the friends to break into Greg's ex-wife, Kathy's car, and leave the sweater inside. She wanted them to report the incident to the police using the payphone, stating that the shirt had been stolen. The police would search the car and find the sweater, which would lead them to believe that Kathy was involved in Greg's murder. Initially, Greg dismissed Michelle's claims, thinking that she was not being serious. However, as time went on, Michelle began asking Andrew if he thought his brother Lee might have murdered Greg. Andrew was upset by this request, as he believed that his mother was trying to frame her son for Greg's death. In their closing arguments, the prosecution made a strong statement regarding Michelle's character to the jury. They described her as a cold-blooded killer and urged them to find her guilty. This statement left a lasting impression on the jury, who deliberated for seven hours before reaching a verdict. The jury found Michelle guilty and sentenced her to 60 years in prison. She will be eligible for parole after serving 30 years when she is 74. While this news brought relief to some, others remain skeptical as they believe that Michelle's guilt extends beyond the murder of her husband, Greg. Michelle's former sister-in-law, Michelle Fletcher, holds the belief that Michelle is also responsible for another death. Bryn Fletcher, Greg's brother-in-law and best friend, was killed ten months before Greg was murdered. On the day Bryn died, he had embarked on a business trip for Greg's company. Bryn worked as a truck driver and was driving a pickup truck. According to his wife, Michelle Fletcher, Bryn followed directions given to him by Michelle Williams, Greg's wife. Approximately 45 minutes into Bryn's drive, he pulled over to the side of Highway 34. Later, police officers responded to a call regarding an abandoned truck on Highway 34. Upon further investigation, they discovered the body of Bryn inside the vehicle. Bryn had been shot once in the head. Following the autopsy conducted by the medical examiner, it was established that Bryn's manner of death was ruled as suicide. However, Michelle Fletcher, Bryn's wife, had a different opinion. She believes that Michelle Williams is somehow responsible for Bryn's demise. Michelle Fletcher believed that Michelle killed Bryn in order to cover up her lies, as Bryn may have been onto her out-of-control behavior. Despite Michelle Fletcher's suspicions, no charges have ever been brought upon Michelle for Bryn's death, and the police have indicated that they have no plans to reopen the investigation.